The Browns beat the Baltimore Ravens 33 to 31 on the road. When this game first started with the Deshaun Watson pick six to Kyle Hamilton and then Baltimore went up 14-0, it looked like Baltimore is going to win this game at home the same way they were able to stomp Seattle and the Detroit Lions. But Lamar Jackson did not have a good game, okay? He had an interception before halftime that he was trying to hit Rashad Bateman downfield deep, but I don't know if it was miscommunication or if the ball got tipped at the line or if Lamar Jackson just underthrew it, but it was a terrible interception. And then in the second half, Deshaun Watson outplayed Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson didn't have a great performance in this game, and he's a large reason why the Ravens lost this game. And when you look at the Ravens' previous losses, you can't really put them on Lamar because the receivers let him down. But in this game, Lamar Jackson, he let the Ravens down. You can't be in the MVP discussion, a frontrunner at that for the award, and then throw a back-breaking pick six to Greg Newsom that gives the Cleveland Browns hope. Deshaun Watson struggled out the gate in this game. At one point, you question if Deshaun Watson was even going to last because he got injured. He had to leave early to go to the locker room. But one thing I'll give Deshaun Watson a lot of props for is this dude is tough as hell. He may be one of the toughest quarterbacks in the NFL. He was getting his ankle rolled up on. He was taking big hits on the sideline, but he kept getting up and putting the Browns in position to still have a chance to win this game. And when they were down two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, I thought the game was all but over. I changed the channel to another game. And then my homeboy hit me up and he said, hey, man, like, you better go back and watch that Browns-Ravens game and not look at the score. And the Browns end up coming all the way back from 14 down and making it in the ball game. And I'm like, oh, snap. Like, it doesn't matter. The Ravens are still going to find a way to pull this game out. But the Browns, they just completely neutralized this Ravens offense in the second half. When the Ravens can't get the run game going, yes, they do have the ability to throw the football downfield, but they still are a team that is going to win and lose the majority of their games based on their ability to run the football. And they didn't have a lot of success doing that, especially in the second half. Meanwhile, Cleveland, on the other hand, although they didn't get a great performance all around by Deshaun Watson, you know, Jerome Ford had 100-plus on the ground in this game. And Deshaun Watson, to his credit, it's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. He finished this game out completing, what, 14 or 14 of his passes? Now, you still want to see him play a complete all-around game if you're a Browns fan because he's getting paid $250 million fully guaranteed. You need him to play the same way he did in the second half for a whole entire 60 minutes and for the remainder of this season, if you're going to have a chance at not only being able to win this division, but being able to make a deep playoff run if you make it to the postseason. Deshaun Watson, this dude is really inconsistent. His best game up to this point has been against the Tennessee Titans and maybe the Arizona Cardinals, which isn't really too much to write home about. And when you look at the way this game started for the Ravens, you probably thought that this game was going to go the same way the Seattle Seahawks game and the Detroit Lions game did. But the difference between those games and the way that this game went is the fact that Lamar Jackson didn't cost the Baltimore Ravens with costly mistakes. And the Ravens were able to have success running the football and they had a lot of success on defense. Cleveland has one of the best defenses that they've ever had in the history of their franchise. You know, Jim Schwartz definitely has overhauled this defense. Looking at this defense this year and the way that it played last year, it's a night and day difference. They got athletes on the front seven who can neutralize Lamar Jackson. Like, Lamar Jackson, he may be the most athletically gifted quarterback to ever enter the NFL, but Miles Garrett has to be one of the most athletically gifted edge rushers to ever play this game. You know, like they had a good game plan for being able to contain Lamar. And if the Ravens get put in situations where they got to continue to win games, not having the ability to lean on a run game, and you got to ask Lamar Jackson to throw you to a win, I don't know if that's a consistent formula for them to be able to win, especially in the postseason. You see, when you get into the postseason, it's important that you have a quarterback that can minimize mistakes. And if he does have a couple of mistakes, he has to be able to overcome them. 
I don't think Lamar Jackson is at that point yet where he's good enough to overcome mistakes. And there were a couple of other factors that gave the Browns the win. Like once they had that block field goal, the momentum shifted. And then when you threw that pick six, the Greg Newsome, the momentum was all on Cleveland's side. And all they had to do was get in field goal range and win this thing. And it pretty much was wraps. You see, the Browns, for some way, somehow this season, have been able to win games the same way the Steelers have. Not having great quarterback play, having great special teams play, making big stops when it matters on defense. That's the way the Browns have been able to win ball games. But if Deshaun Watson can finally wake up, I'm really scared as a Steelers fan how good this Browns team can truly be. And the Browns were down two of their starting offensive tackles who I believe are out for the season. And this Ravens pass rush at times was definitely getting home. But Deshaun Watson, he made some really big runs in this game as well, especially in the fourth quarter down the stretch. You got to give a lot of props to the way Deshaun Watson played in the second half and the way this Browns defense was able to neutralize this Ravens offense in the second half. And with this win, Cleveland, if they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers next week and the Ravens lose to Cincinnati on Thursday night, they could take control of the AFC North. There's a lot of pressure on Baltimore, not just being able to win this division so they can have a home field playoff game, but also being able to stay in contention for the one seed. Because if Lamar has to go on the road and play Joe Burrow or Patrick Mahomes, you kind of question his ability to show up on the road and take care of the football. And this was a prime example why people are hesitant to believe that the Ravens can win it all with Lamar Jackson at the helm. I think that this game was a wake-up call for the Baltimore Ravens and company that this team may not be what we thought they were. Now, I still believe this is the best team in the NFL from a talent standpoint. One team isn't going, one loss isn't going to deter me from getting off that take. And I do believe that they can bounce back this Thursday night, but this was a really devastating loss for the Baltimore Ravens.